Episode 5 of The Acolyte has definitely been my favorite so far. I really enjoyed the duel, even if there's some stuff in it that I thought was pretty goofy, like Manny Jacinto getting taken up by the bugs, but I thought Manny Jacinto himself was really good in this episode. I think I remember an interview from before the season started talking about how the role was really written with Manny Jacinto in mind, and they'd probably have to do something very different if it wasn't him, and I can really see that coming through here. I don't think anyone was that surprised with the reveal in this episode that Kaimir was in in fact, Maze Master. But even though that was pretty obvious, something I wasn't ready for was that they were in fact going to kill everyone except for Soul and the girls. I figured in typical Star Wars, or maybe more fittingly Star Trek fashion, all of the red shirt Jedi would all get killed, and then we'd be left with Soul, Jeki, and Yord somehow escaping. In the end, Soul is the only one of the Jedi who actually survived, and then there was a parent trap situation where Mei switched her position with Osha. She's going with Soul, and now Osha is with Kymir. Kymir did hint at the lengths to which they were supposed to go to protect their identity, but he did say that the Jedi like him might call Kymir a Sith. I think the wording of this is kind of interesting, where it could be taken to mean that Kymir doesn't actually see himself as a Sith. And while one of the big questions of the series is obviously how much did the Jedi learn and when, the shorter term version of that now is whether and when Kymir is able to stop Soul. Every other Jedi has been taken out of the picture, but Soul now has that conversation in mind and could bring up the possibility of Sith in the next working group. For Osha's part, I'm also starting to think that maybe she ends up being the Acolyte by the end of the show. May has already burned that bridge, but there's been this hanging specter of the information that Soul is keeping back from Osha, and that could really interrupt the current dynamic she has with the Jedi. Osha having such faith in them could easily be flipped on its head by both what happened in the forest and by learning whatever it is that Soul has been withholding from her this whole time. Basically, the idea that love isn't all that far from hey here. But overall, I thought the choreography was really fun in this episode, and really effective at communicating information, which we'll get to in a second. They were blending a lot of the kind of kung fu movie stuff from the earlier episodes with more of the prequel style lightsaber duels. And while I still think there's going to be some mileage varying on whether or not individual people like that they've gone for that kind of kung fu movie style with the martial arts, I personally enjoyed it and I think it came together well with the lightsaber fighting in this episode. There were two particular things that came up though for more lore nerds in the lightsaber duel here. The first is that we have some live-action use of Cortosis. This is a material that originated in Star Wars Legends that was basically able to short out lightsaber blades on contact. I think it originally came up in I, Jedi, where the Gensari use it, a force sect that had kind of split off from the Jedi at the end of the Clone Wars. I actually mentioned them in a recent video I did on different Force traditions. One of the other usual qualities of Cortosis is that it's usually pretty much just good to short out the lightsabers. You only want to use it as armor when fighting. Jedi, so it makes sense for the Sith to want to use it, or whatever Chimere is. And that's also why you can do stuff like punch someone in the face wearing it, and have that be effective when they're wearing that armor. When I did a short explaining this, I saw some complaints that they didn't actually mention what it was in the episode, but I feel like the choreography and the stuff you actually see in the episode explain everything you need to know about what's going on. You might not get it at first, but after a few times of them connecting with the lightsaber and then having it short out, you can kind of pick up on what's going on there. I don't think you need Soul to stop in the middle of the battle and say, this is Cortosis or it shorts out lightsabers. I don't think knowing the name of it really adds anything there, even if this was something that was being introduced for the first time in this episode. That would kind of also assume that these Jedi know what it is, which I don't think we can take as a given. Secondly, we see Kaimir turn his lightsaber into two lightsabers, one Shoto, the shorter one, and then his regular length one. And this actually sets us up for something that I think is an upcoming conflict, the duel between him and Vernestra. Vernestra is going to be using a light whip in this series, and when Luke had to deal with a lightsaber whip, usually from Dark Lady Lumaya, he used a similar short lightsaber, like the one Kaimir has, that he'd made for that specific specific situation. Basically, by using the Shoto along with his regular lightsaber, he'd be able to kind of control where the light whip is going, wrap it around stuff, all that kind of thing. So if this is going where I think it is, it'll be really cool to see a dynamic that's existed in lightsaber battles and comics and books since the 1980s show up in live action here. I think I'll probably do a standalone video talking about the different materials in Star Wars Legends and canon that have been shown to resist lightsabers, but that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.